stage of the picture this time, but you still get the music. Um, and um, I apologize, uh, it was recommended to me that I use some notes for this section because as it says here, you're getting a bit old and might forget the important stuff you need to say. Oh, I, I think I made that note actually. Anyway, so, uh, so Chris, thanks very much and, uh, and uh, hello again. Uh, you'll be pleased to know we are on the final straight now. Uh, and having set the scene earlier, I'm back to summarize what we've learned this afternoon and then offer some thoughts as to next steps to consider on the back of this research. So, just to recap what we've learned, uh, we were asked to help uh, people exploit the brand music opportunity better by providing new information and guidance. In terms of new information, our EEG test demonstrated how consistent brand music is a highly effective tool for advertisers. It significantly boosts ad likability, familiarity, and audience engagement throughout the ad. And in terms of guidance, uh, I think Chris's semiotic analysis reveals how different music elements and styles implicitly communicate rational and emotional meaning for brands. In turn, providing a framework for more objective conversations about using music more strategically. So in summary, all of the existing and new evidence that we've gathered together points to music being an incredibly powerful tool and multiplier of effectiveness and meaning for brands worthy of far greater consideration and focus by advertisers and agencies in considering how to make it work harder for them. In which context, as I do, I'd like to draw a parallel with German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche and his thoughts on the subject of music. I often drop a bit of Nietzsche into a conversation, as uh, you will know. Uh, and his thought is this, without music, life would be a mistake. Now, please don't ask me to explain what it means, but most people tend to instinctively get it, so I'm assuming you're with me on that. And on the strength of the evidence we've gathered in this study, I began thinking, what if? What if I suggested replacing the word life with advertising? Without music, advertising would be a mistake. Now, I acknowledge that sounds like a bit of a ludicrous overclaim, um, but why I'm sharing it with you today is that it made me think, it made me really think that the decision not to use music in a more strategic way for brands should be an active choice, not a default setting. In the same way that you would think very carefully before running a TV commercial that doesn't feature visuals, I believe the same principle should be applied to using music consistently for your brand. It's a great tool. You know, we've got to make the most of it. So, soapbox moment over. Uh, if today's presentation has inspired you to give music its due consideration and explore how it can work for your brand, then what next? Well, we've created a couple of practical outputs designed to help set you off the path to brand music enlightenment. And the first is a set of helpful questions to think about when briefing brand music properties. Uh, these were designed and developed in collaboration with the agency account planners across some of the workshops that were run by PUSH. Uh, and we sincerely believe that reviewing these within your team should help stimulate thinking about, uh, or thinking and different discussion about music and how it might relate to your brand in far more detail. And they're detailed in a copy of the report. And it says here, hold up copy. I told you my memory's going. Um, the second practical output is our brand music navigator, which we've created to help you explore the semiotic deconstruction of music through the lens of your current or desired brand associations. And hopefully to inspire you with some specific music examples that can communicate these. Now I'm gonna give you a brief tour of it now. Uh, and just so you know, I would have done it live, but there were some computer issues. There'll be a chance for you to have a little play on it in the, uh, in the laptops in Studio Two. Uh, and I would recommend you give it a go. And give us your feedback. But anyway, here's the homepage. So, Hey, it'll be the same sort of experience, trust me. So imagine you're on the home page, you can click on think or feel words and it brings up the list like this. So we're gonna click on, to, on one of these and we're gonna go and have a look at Witty. Okay, so here's Witty and this is the screen that you are faced with. So from here, you have three boxes on the bottom. Uh, so let's click on word palette. Now this allows us to explore a spectrum of words that are linked to the main think or feel descriptor. So to give you an example, whilst I might think that I'm particularly droll, you may feel that facetious is a far more accurate description for me, and you'd probably be right. Uh, but the purpose of this is all about expanding the relevance of the tool as far as possible and for many briefs as we possibly can. 
Uh, next to uh, the, the word palette, we have musical parameters. Now, this is all about helping us understand how music implicitly communicates a specific notion or emotion when deconstructed using the six parameters that Chris has talked you through. So you can click on each of the parameters to see a fuller explanation. So let's look at tonal character, for example, and we can see that here in this instance, we're looking for choppy, discordant, or incongruent tonal character to communicate witty. Uh, and we click on sonic metaphor, um, we can see that it's about inventive and nimble with mimetic effects. You can do that for all of those, you can have them all revealed at the same time, uh, and that just helps bring it to life. Uh, and finally, the next box, musical inspiration. This is all about allowing you to listen to an eclectic mix of five tracks with characteristics that fulfill the relevant parameters. If you like, a start point for brand music inspiration. So if we click, for example, here, there, there, there are the tracks up the top corner. If we click on minor swing, for example, here we go, this is what we're confronted with, and we can click on the player there and we can listen to a 30 second clip. <laughs> Um, and uh, yes, and we can read the descriptions about how this communicates wittiness. Uh, and the hashtags that you can see next to it uh, also suggest how this sp uh, specific song is linked to all of the other words within this analysis. And they're all active links. You can click from one of those and say, actually, yeah, I like this, uh, but I want to find out a bit more about intelligent music. Click through to that and you can explore it there. So that's the musical inspiration. And aiding the practicality of this tool, uh, we've also created a section where you can, here it is, uh, where you can also access further information, number one, about the semiotics analysis. Uh, you can also access the full research report that you're going to be taking away with you today and the briefing questions that I've just covered off earlier. And we're going to be adding to this over uh, the next few days, hopefully adding helpful IPA and ISBAR documents about briefing and purchasing music rights. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, I should also say, actually, I'm, I must say this, it has been created to be responsive on mobile, but over the last day or so, we encountered a couple of issues with iOS 9. So if you go on there and it doesn't work, don't worry, we're on the case and it will eventually work. So just to warn you in advance, we're, we're aware of that. Uh, and now finally, I'm going to mention the R word. Remember that? Radio. Because if you're an advertiser currently or considering using music more consistently for your brand, and radio isn't already part of your media mix thinking, well, there are some facts that you need to know. Firstly, we know from experience that advertisers who use music consistently find it easier to develop effective radio campaigns from a creative perspective. And this in turn leads to much stronger results, sometimes surprisingly so. In our original radio and TV multiplier study, Millwood Brown found that the best performing radio ad featured very strong, consistent brand music that had been used over a long period of time. Not only that, it outperformed its TV counterpart by 20%. In which context, I make no apology again for reminding you about the important finding from our recent ROI multiplier study, which highlighted that allocating 20% of a media budget to radio can uplift overall campaign return on investment by over 8%. Using music consistently, especially alongside TV campaigns, will mut multiply this effect even further. And that's really useful to bear in mind, especially when TV inflation starts to bite into media budgets. So there are those next steps again. Um, and this is the final slide. I just want to say, if you'd like to discuss any of these things in, uh, in any depth or any of the other findings revealed this afternoon, all of the speakers will be in Studio 2 having a drink. Please come and join us and, uh, and chat away. Uh, you'll also have a chance to hear about the history of Abbey Road Studios, as Lucy has already highlighted. Uh, you'll, more excitingly, of course, you'll have the opportunity to collect a copy of the printed research report uh, and have the opportunity, as I've already said, to play around on the brand Music Navigator tool. Alternatively, you can access all of this stuff through the Radio Center website with immediate effect. Uh, not much remains for me to do up, up to now, apart from to thank our speakers for sharing their thoughts with us today. Uh, thanks also to uh, the Radio Center team and Abbey Road team for helping get this project off the ground, aligned, and happening on time today. It's been emotional. And also, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for once again taking the time out to come and join us today and hear about this. We really, really do appreciate you coming here and spending your time, because we know how busy you all are. So, a concluding thought. 
Uh, hoping that today's presentation has got you thinking about exploring music for your brand, we've selected, specially selected, our playout track on the basis of its ostinato, its strong, steady, and pacey rock beat, and its emphatic chord progressions to help you feel galvanized into action. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.